This programme is the Petro Canada Lubricants Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli. Hello and welcome to Donington for the first round of the 2018 Petro Canada Lubricants Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli. We've got some new regulations in this year which will see us bringing in the 997 version of the 911 which will be a really exciting change. We've got lots of new drivers in for this year so I've been catching up with some of them this morning. Fantastic to have you joining us for this season. You've actually signed the whole year already. Yes, I have. Um, it's it's very exciting. I'm a newbie to the sport, so um, I've just done track days before with PCGB, and uh, this is a whole new ball game, of course, and just trying to get to grips with it at the moment. So I did some testing the last couple of days uh, when the weather wasn't quite as glorious as this. <laughs> uh, rather wet um, uh, and on wet tyres, so very different from today. So first time on the slicks today, uh, and yeah, so very different. Yeah, I recognise this car. This yes. was extremely successful last year. I it believe was. this was Jake McLear's car. Yes, it was. Um, so the, it's got its pedigree. <laughs> so the, the driver is obviously different. Um, but yes, it's a, it's a good car. But it's all work in progress. You know, it's start of the season. So who knows? Mike, you're back. We haven't seen you since 2016, but you've made a comeback this year. Yes, we're back. Um, qualifying didn't go that well, but it's nice to be back. We're, we're a little bit behind, I'm afraid, but uh, it's great to be back, honestly. It's a, it's a really is a, a good race series, is this, and, and you can see with the, the really good drivers, the, the cars, are, the preparation of the cars is, is, is you know, the brilliant. Yeah, it's really good. But um, we're just at the wrong end of the grid at the moment, so qualifying didn't go quite as well as... You know, this is this is what it is when you, you sort of take a year out and uh, you come back and everyone else has moved on. Angus, you've actually never raced with us in this championship before, but you do have some race experience. Yes, yeah, I do. I've I've done the um, Toyo Tires Championship uh, for the last two years um, with not a lot of success, to be honest with you. But um, we've decided for this year just to, to to come up and try the slick tires and uh, a new championship. Yeah. First time out on slicks, though, that's got to be pretty exciting and pretty treacherous, uh, especially it's pretty greasy this morning. Uh, yeah, it was definitely an eye opener. It's so much more grip than what I'm used to. Um, you know, real in at the deep ends. Lots of fast guys. We're class two, the class one guys. When, when I did when I did last year, there was um, we were towards the front of the grid. There's some slower cars. This time it's the other way around. So it's a real baptism of fire. But um, yeah, loving it. So much grip. Slicks are brilliant. Definitely the way forward. Mark, you had a fantastic end to the season last year. How have you been celebrating over the winter? Yeah, we have. It's, uh, it was great. We, uh, at the end of it, we couldn't believe it, you know. I mean, uh, <laughs> we just in, in cloud nine, really, with it. Uh, it was great. But, of course, that's forgotten about now. It's a new season, so we've just got to start again. You and Jake, obviously, both winning the titles last year. I'm sure your aim is no different this year, but I hear that your car wasn't quite ready, so you're back in your championship winning car. That's right, yeah, we're using that car again. Uh, obviously, Jake isn't here, so he's not racing. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to continue with that car for now. And when the, uh, the 997 is ready, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have a stab with that one. Ahead of race one, any uh, nerves, or do they go out the window as soon as you turn that engine on? Uh, well, when the lights go out, they normally go. Hopefully, um, I've just have to remember to get it off the line because obviously we haven't done that for a few months. So yeah, if I can get it cleanly off the line, hopefully we'll have a good race. Pete, just ahead of race one, this is pretty good. Uh, starting P4 in a brand new car. Yeah, quite chuffed. I mean, uh, we've, we came in a bit heavy. I just took 35 kilos out the car. So uh, probably would have put me on class two. So I'm happy where we started. So car feels good. I'm hoping for a podium. We'll see how we get from there. The engines are starting. So here's the grid for race one. Thank you, Fern. Pole position, Mark Sumter from Craig Wilkins. Defending champion, Mark McAleer lines up third. Former champion, Pete Morris is fourth. 
Row three, Chris Dyer, the leader in the Caymans. Then James Birch from Simon Clark and Andy Toon. Row five, Peter Erseg and Carrie Moody. Mike Johnson and Mike Price next up row six from Jonathan Evans, the class two pole man from Trevor Lewis and Angus Archer with Paul Seagrave. Then it's Tim Bates, David Bostrell, Natalie McGloin, Ed Grimshaw, Nigel Young, Del Brett. Penultimate row, Steve Freeman and Andrew Muggeridge with Carl Hazelton completing a very impressive lineup. Ideal conditions for round one of the Petro Canada Lubricants Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli, which is underway. Michael Price is stalling on the grid and off onto the grass goes Mike Johnson. Hopefully he'll be able to recover from there. But very clearly a crowded mid-order here at Donington Park for the opening race of the year. Sideways moment there for Trevor Lewis in the 66 car. Collects it all up. Peter Erseg looking at the newcomer to the championship, Angus Archer, who qualified third in class. So a good performance from him. Second in class was Trevor Lewis, who we saw going a bit sideways. So he'll have lost out there. And Jonathan Evans is the pole position man in class two. We'll talk more about class structure later on in the race. We're riding on board with 42, James Birch. James made his debut with us at Brands Hatch last year. Other than Mike Johnson and Michael Price, I think everybody else away relatively safely. Peter Erseg giving chase there. And the race lead, oh, and safety car to, I think, deal with Michael Price. We'll try and grab a shot for you along the main straight. You can see the car's being greeted by heavily waved yellow, so they'll, they're pretty much in single file anyway, so shouldn't be too much checking up. But it was Craig Wilkins, uh, after all that, that got the, the uh, better of the opening lap. It, they both looked strong off the line, to be fair, Mark Subta and Craig Wilkins, but it's Craig that leads them. There is the, uh, as predicted, Mike Johnson's car just to the left of shot. It's disappeared out of shot now, but being attended to by the wonderful marshals here at Donington Park so that we can resume racing. So Wilkins made the best of the start with Mark Sumter in second place and Peter Morris looking for a podium in third. Safety car lights out and it's up to Craig Wilkins to pace them down to the restart. He'll be trying to accelerate when Mark Sumter's not expecting it but they're both very experienced drivers so maybe don't expect too much of a getaway here. And we go green again. Indeed, that was the case. Pete Morris back in third. Fourth position, Mark McAleer. Quick look down the orders. Some recoveries necessary from Michael Price there in green. He goes past David Botterill. And we'll probably see Mike Johnson making some moves as well. In car view from veteran of the championship, David Botterill. Working hard. One of the older machines in the championship. But he, he is the proof that... That model could still deliver the business on track. Pete Morris, good to see him in a podium position here, Pete. Only had two podia last year. So he'll be looking to get the podium Pete nickname back uh, in tow. Craig Wilkins, the leader, won the last race of the year. So this could be bookended race victories for Craig if he can hold on to it here. Certainly showing the pace from qualifying. And there is Mike Johnson recovering. He was uh, pushed out of the gravel, so we'll see what he could do but obviously he's he's a few laps down but getting stuck in amongst the traffic car number 59 there Del Brett is uh, the next man that the 47 car wants to go through and it'll be a testing opportunity really you have to say now for Mike Johnson third and fourth Peter Morris how many championships are there between those two class one the two cars that we were looking at there the uh, champions for the last four seasons incredibly but it's Wilkins who's made a good start. Mark Subter in the two-tone blue Bayless and Harding Paragon back car is running well. There in fifth and sixth, James Birch and Simon Clark. On board with Simon now, joined us in a box to last year, the penultimate meeting of the season at Brands Hatch. Now racing the Cayman. And in fact, we've got uh, 996s and 7s, 1, 2, 3, 4. Then Chris Dyer, James Birch and Simon Clark. So... A good pattern emerging for this. And you can see Mark Sumter beginning to get a little bit closer to the race leader now, Craig Wilkins. Mark will fancy his chances. Did a 1.14.8 in qualifying. Craig Wilkins' time, a 1.15.6. Uh, James Birch working hard. Good shot here coming up in into Coppice Corner. You really, from the camera angle there, saw the climb uphill. And Donington has a, some superb undulations. You can see even a little undulation down Exhibition Straight. 
into the chicane, which is the uh, the last two bends on the lap, and it is still leading Craig Wilkins. There's David Botterell dicing with Natalie McGloin, the pair of them qualified 18th and 19th on the grid. And David Botterell looking to try and get past Natalie, so a good battle developing between those two. Continuation, really, of, of the... Uh, on paper, battle they had in qualifying. Natalie there now pass, so David Botterell moves up a place, running in sixth position in class two, which is still at the moment as we ride on board with Natalie, still led, uh, led by Jonathan Evans. So there is David and Natalie continuing their battle and uh, David at the moment just stretching his legs getting away a little bit as they go down through the crane of curves into the old hairpin now and David putting a little bit of bit of a gap between himself and Natalie McGloy David's target is going to be Tim Bates in the white and blue boxster back with the race leaders and great to see five cars in shot the leading Cayman in fifth place is Chris Dyer and the race leader remains Craig Wilkins He'll look in his mirrors and he'll see Mark Sumter behind him. Sumter knows that he's got a quick lap in that car from qualifying. But will he be able to close down on a more importantly, perhaps, pass Craig Wilkins? Third position now is Mark McAleer. So Pete Morris down to fourth in the 997. Can't wait to see McAleer's 997 when it comes out as well. Across the line they go. Mark, double outright champion now. And he's won the uh, class in addition to that. In 2016, he was outright champion last year. So down towards us is Natalie McGloin in the number five car. David Bottrell does seem to have extended that gap a little bit further and that could be the reason why Natalie coming into the pits, hopefully just for diagnostics, hopes that she'll be able to rejoin the race as Mark McAleer is putting big pressure here now on Mark Sumter. So McAleer versus Sumter, the top two runners from last year's championship, certainly for as far as class one was concerned. Those two engaging in battle, Pete Morris still there in fourth. Well, in shot there, the yellow class one car of Nigel Young, busy chasing Tim Bates in the number 12. Tim running in fifth position in class two. Nice to see Nigel Young's progress car looking good you can see the rookie cross on the back of the car denoting that he is a new driver to motorsport and out front race leaders starting to have to deal with some traffic Natalie McGloin exemplary driving allows the front runners through they're down at Redgate meanwhile we've got um, Carrie Moody here having a very good dice indeed with Andy Toon Andy of course the outright champion back in 2016 which he won in Class 2, so learning his way further up the order in Class 1, second season in Class 1 for Andy Toon. And Andy, the guy being chased here at the moment by Carey Moody. Down behind them is the man leading Class 2, that's Jonathan Evans. Here is Jonathan, you might remember a front runner from a couple of seasons back. And wonderful to see Jonathan back with us this year and has lost none of the form that he had when he raced with us before. Uh, knocking on the door of a top 10 here overall, which is going to be very impressive to see. So it was a good pole position for Jonathan, qualifying in 13th place ahead of Trevor Lewis. Battle for the lead still on. Mark McAleer closing up on Mark Sumter. Pete Morris still there in fourth place. Trevor Lewis in the 66 car. Oh, on the inside there, that was Carl Hazelton in the Class 3 24 car. I need to tell you about Class 3. Might have to wait for race two as Mark Sumter comes under big pressure now from Mark McAleer. This could take the pressure off Craig Wilkins in lead position at the moment. So Wilkins the leader, Mark Sumter second, Mark McAleer having a racy defence, a racy start to the defence of his outright title. is putting the pressure on Mark Sumter and looking for second place. Car 15, Peter Ersek still running well and Michael Price immediately behind him. Michael we saw have that don't know if it was a mechanical problem off the start. Maybe we'll find out after the race. Job to know where to look in this one because now we've got a battle on for the lead. And I said that the pressure might be off the race leader, but Mark's up to having a look. Runs a little bit wide there. Mark McAleer challenging 
from the inside line. He's back and they're going to be able to grab second place. That really came about because Sumter was challenging for the lead. And now he's on the outside line. And Mark McAleer is going to try and come through for second place. He's got the inside line coming down into the chicane and McAleer goes through. McAleer second, Mark Sumter down to third. Pete Morris is still there in fourth place as they clear the S's. Morris coming up and challenging for a podium again on the outside line as they head down to Redgate. But the race leader, Craig Wilkins, is now going to feel pressure from a different quarter. And from third on the grid, Mark McAleer fights his way up into second place. Peter Ersek and Michael Price having a great race just at the moment outside the top 10. Jonathan Lewis is there, uh, sorry, Jonathan Evans is there ahead of them at the moment and Peter Ersek fending off Michael Price at the minute. Wonderful race between Cayman and 997 and the Cayman holding, holding the uh, initiative at the moment. Down towards us comes Carl Hazelton, the 20 car of Nigel Young. And in the mix as well, Steve Freeman in the silver car and Freeman running in, in class two, as indeed the, the majority of the boxers are. We do have the Carl Hazelton uh, boxer running in class three, which is the new class for this year. And again, I'll get around to telling you about that, hopefully in race number two. Impressive grid this year, but set to get even bigger over the course of the season. Peter Ersek still dicing hard with Michael Price. Fascinating battle between these two men. Onto exhibition straight. Race leader though, still Craig Wilkins. Pete Morris was going to have a look up the inside line into Redgate. Mark McAleer still there in second place at the moment. Quick look back at uh, Peter Ersek. Looks like a good run by Michael Price here. On the outside line as they come down into Redgate. Jonathan Evans still out front. Peter Ersek takes the uh, wide line he was defending on the inside for the majority of the straight but then came out and took the racing line good clean fair racing between them there's Angus Archer in car number 70 Angus just shy of a podium at the moment the podium slot the last podium slot held there by Paul Seagrave in red so we're looking at second third and fourth in class two there and Angus Archer will be very pleased with his debut with us in this championship and it's great to have him make the move over uh, into the Petro Canada Lubricants Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli and dicing for a podium on his debut in Class 2, which is absolutely superb. Here they come down into the chicane again and challenging for the lead is Mark McAleer who pulls out offline and, and is slowing up. McAleer is slowing, challenging for the lead, but McAleer looks like he's got a problem. And that really does negate the pressure to Craig Wilkins, who's still got the lead. Marks up to back into second. Pete Morris is third. Wrong place on the circuit for Mark McAleer for problems to manifest themselves. No idea what that was. Peter Ersek now has managed to clear the class two leader, Jonathan Evans. And that means that Michael Price has got some work to do. Price powers past the class two car. They've had a good look at the uh, class two leader in this race as Mark McAleer extricates himself from his car. And that's a non-finish, not what you want in the opening race of the season. Uh, for him, Andy Toon uh, is next up. There's Carrie Moody, so those two still dicing hard as well. And at the moment, second in class two, Trevor Lewis qualified in second, so recovered well from that slightly uh, worrying moment for him about this point on the track on lap number one. Angus Archer still busy chasing a podium as well. Pete Morris then on for a podium here and traffic building for the race leaders and Craig Wilkins slots down through on the inside line of Del Brett the lone class four runner that's for the drivers running a limited program um, we'll score half point so it's slightly cheaper registrations as well but you don't have to commit to the entire championship in class four across the line go the three leaders nothing really to choose between Wilkins Sumter and Morris they'll deal with traffic and then sort themselves out Nigel Young uh, is passed and Nigel obeying the blue flags holding his line keeping well out of harm's way learning his craft here in racing and Wilkins really has probably come through that slightly the better of the first three drivers because he's established a bit more of a lead now from Mark Sumter in second place and Peter Morris back in third. 
Having said that, Sumter closing in again, the pole position man. As I've said before, in his head, he knows he's got the pace here around Donington. He's piling the pressure on and closing up on Craig Wilkins again. There's been very little time for Craig Wilkins to have a breather in this race. And they've got Pete Morris behind as well. Wilkins, one win, five second places, three thirds last year. And a moment there for the 71 car of Ed Grimshaw and Nigel Young involved as well. That is sad to see. I hope nobody else gets collected by that. And I don't think that Ed Grimshaw is going any further. So, car in a prone position, might possibly another safety car, but we're well into race time here as the leaders go across the line again. And it's still Craig Wilkins leading from Mark Sumter. Going to be some yellow flags around the track now for sure. Pete Morris is still there in third place. There is Steve Freeman running seventh in class two. And indeed, it's a red flag, which will be accompanied by a checker. The results going back a lap, which means that Craig Wilkins takes the first win of the season. Bookended wins for him. It's up to second for Pete Morris, then Chris Dyer and James Birch. Simon Clark in sixth from Andy Toon and Carrie Moody. Peter Ersek and Jonathan Evans winning class two from Trevor Lewis and Paul Seagrave. Angus Archer next. Then Tim Bates, David Bottle, Steve Freeman and Del Brett. Nigel Young in 18th from Carl Hazelton, who completed the finishers. Congratulations, Craig. Great day to start the season. Yeah, thank you very much. That's not a bad way to start, is it? Yeah, it was difficult, though, wasn't it? You were all really close, but you actually managed to get the fast slap as well. Well, to be honest, I suspect I was holding Mark up a little bit. He's definitely quicker at the moment. Um, I'm still not completely happy with the balance in the car, although we're working on it. But to come away with a win from the first round is, uh, is pretty good. Mike, that was really exciting for us to watch, but you made it look a little bit difficult. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't want an exciting race. I wanted an easy one, but I messed it up a bit on the start. Not terrible, but I just didn't get away quick enough. I didn't have enough revs on the engine and then slightly snicked a gear, which cost me a little bit and let Craig into, uh, into the lead. Uh, then, yeah, it was, it was hard work. Um, I sort of had to run on Craig, but then it, he was backing me into the others. So it was exciting to watch, I should imagine, but uh, I'd rather have been up front. Pete, new car. Or back on the podium, fantastic. Uh, it's great because I had a bad season last year because I was developing the Nissan, I couldn't develop the 996. And to get a new 997, a new car on the grid on the podium with the weight penalties we have, I've done, I'm really happy. Uh, when I was qualified it, uh, this morning, we, we weighed it afterwards and it was 35 kilos overweight, so we took the 35 kilos out and it just transformed the car. I think they'll all be out in 997s next year because it's such an easy car to drive. So it's not it's less physical than the 996. And I'm so happy with the, with, the, with the podium and thanks for Strasser and everybody else for the, for, yeah, that's a great car as usual. Jonathan, congratulations P1 on your first outing for the season. Great start. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, really pleased to be back. And uh, the car's been uh, sitting kind of all winter and most of last season, pulled it out the back of the shed um, as a last minute standing. Uh, and it seems to, have, um, seems to have done us proud, really. Well, you are using your experience uh, from the championship before. It's obviously been a while since we've uh, seen you, but it's great to have you back. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's, I've done quite a lot of racing, I'm fortunate to race in, uh, in the UK and Europe. Uh, and, and really, out of all the things I've done, Porsche Club takes some, takes some real beating. It's, it's very friendly, but massively competitive. Um, and it's nice to have such close racing, really. For the duration of the race, I had no gauges, so I didn't know where uh, I couldn't see my rev um, gauge or anything. And so they're trying to figure out what the issue is, uh, hopefully get it rectified for, for race two. Uh, otherwise, I'll just have to go out and listen very carefully to the engine again. <laughs> Fantastic way to start the year. A podium, Trevor. Yeah, yes, I'm quite pleased about that. We were all a bit of a sweat to get everything ready, but... Uh yeah, I'm very chuffed with that. So. That was really exciting with a safety car at the beginning, then a mad dash in the middle and a red flag to finish. Yeah, it was a bit of everything in that race, really. I, I think we got a few punts up the bottom. and uh, <laughs> um, But yeah, it, it, was, it was really good. And I'm particularly pleased because we had to put all new suspension on and we haven't tested. So this is straight out the box, put it in and let's go. So hopefully it'll, uh, it'll pay off at the end of the season. Well, congratulations, third place. Not a bad start to the year. Yeah, it's good. We've, um, I was a bit disappointed with qualifying. Didn't quite get on the pace I wanted. We've had a lack of testing this winter and uh, it was all about the race. And there was a bit of a kerfuffle at the start. I nearly hit uh, Mike Price, who stalled on the grid. And that was close. But then Trevor Lewis and Jonathan Evans came together and allowed me into second. Made the most of it, but my exhaust had come off as well. And I got smoke coming into the cabin, so it wasn't the greatest. But I thought, I'll just keep going. I've got Angus Archer behind me, showing me his mirrors. I'm thinking, this guy wants to come by. So when the red flag came, it was a bit of a relief, to be honest. So we got the, we'll take the trophy all the time. So yeah, good day.
Carl, not only is this your first time racing, but you're also the centre principal at Porsche Centre Chester. That's right, yeah. Fantastic. And how have you been feeling? Have you done any testing? Uh, I've done about 30 minutes yesterday <laughs> in the rain. Yeah. And we were just discussing a moment ago about uh, how you have to actually get your signatures on to, onto your licence so that you're not classed as a novice anymore. That's it. So uh, after I've done three races, then we can uh, call ourselves a racing driver. And so you've also got standard suspension on this car. How, how does that affect the handling of the car? Well, it's a lot slower, a lot slower around the bends. But uh, once we've got the other people in the same class with us at Brands Hatch, then we can uh, have a real race. I can imagine when you head back into the office on Monday, all of your colleagues around you can't, can't really believe it that you've been racing a Porsche that weekend. No, uh, well, I've got most of them here actually, uh, <laughs> <laughs> supporting the car, yeah. Mike, it's fantastic to have you back for the 2018 season and in a new car. Tell us about it. Yeah, new car, 997. It was a bit of a hurried build, but uh, it's always the way. The guys at uh, Candy Classics did a fantastic job. We've been done by the weather on the testing, but we've got it set up as well as we can. A uh, bit of a different animal, uh, more power, more weight, behaves a bit differently. And as you'll see, we've gone for a slightly even livelier design, trying to make sure that it gets noticed. Uh, but it's been a really interesting exercise, and today is a bit of a learning curve, I have to say. Um, we, you can't help but love the extra grunt that the car's got. Um, and you've got to stop that uh, uh, making you a bit lazy but just by being a little bit uh, relying on it coming out of the corners. Uh, it's pretty compliant. They've done very well in, um, in some of the uh, uh, weight design um, through the car. We've got a bit of ballast at the front to help with some turning. So, yeah, very good. Pete, it's wonderful to have you back this year and you've got the new car. Yeah, was, uh, last year I was a bit behind the pace because I, I didn't want to do any development work anymore. So uh, we built a 997, but uh, being a 3.8S, we've got to put a bit more, carry a bit more weight. So th there's 185 kilos difference between the 996s and the 997s, which is quite a bit really. So, and there's only 50 brake horsepower difference in power, or 55. How have you been finding the handling? Are you having to put more ballast at the front or the rear? Is it giving you any understeer or oversteer? Well, you're only allowed to carry 35 kilos on the over the front axle of the car in the blue book. So you have to carry that, at the, put the maximum in the front and then carry the extra 70 kilos in the passenger well. So That's a lot of weight in the passenger well then. So it's me again. Yeah. And, and it's like balance. balance. <laughs> so. <laughs> Didn't make it out for the first race, but we are here on the grid for race two. What happened earlier? Well, um, I had a few issues earlier. Um, my drive shaft broke, and um, we didn't get, manage to get it fixed in time for for the first race. So yeah, it was a bit of a challenge. We're about five minutes away from being ready. Um, so I'm very excited to start the championship now. A little bit late, unfortunately, but yeah, looking forward to it. So obviously no novice to this championship, but you have done some bits and pieces in the past. Yeah, absolutely. I've raced with the 750 Motor Club, um, CSCC, and then uh, early 2000s I was racing in Stock Hatch. Um, so yeah, I've, I've raced over the years and sort of uh, dipped in and out of it, but um, it's good to be back and it's a great club. Dell, fantastic to have you on the grid again for 2018. Yeah, pleasure to be here. Fantastic. You haven't raced this circuit before, I believe. No, this is our first time at Donington. Fantastic. Yeah. How, how's it been going so far? How was quality and how was race one? Yeah, very good. Race one was uh, was particularly exciting. There was lots of uh, close racing. But the pace looking good and you're looking forward to race two. It seems to be a really strong field this year. Plenty of drivers, new drivers. Yes, yes. Very, very strong and quite, quite diverse as well. There's four classes. But this may be our last time in class four. We're working on a 997 for uh, Silverstone. Oh. Well, I've heard today a lot about the 997. It seems to be very popular and also very quick. Right. Well, we hope it will be. We hope it'll allow us to advance a little. Pete, fantastic to have you back on the championship uh, again this year. And now we're looking forward to race two. It's going to be a pretty good one for you. Yeah, I think so, Finn. It's, um, we've been getting better all weekend, so didn't have the best race. So the first race got, uh, got taken out at the start. So hopefully this time get a clean start and uh, build on what the uh, progress has already been for this weekend. Mark Sumter and Craig Wilkins lead the field round for the start of race two. It is indeed Sumter and Wilkins on the front row, McAleer and Morris on row two, followed by James Birch and Simon Clark, Chris Dyer and Andy Toon on row four. Row five, Peter Erseg and Mike Johnson from Kareem Moody and Michael Price. Then it's Trevor Lewis and Angus Archer, Paul Seagrave and Tim Bates on row eight. Row nine, David Bottrell and Jonathan Evans. They're followed by Natalie McGloin and Ed Grimshaw, Nigel Young, Del Brett, Steve Freeman, Andrew Muggeridge and Carl Hazelton completing our grid full grid of cars then for race two 
And away we go. It's lights out here at Donington Park. Conditions again perfect. Good start by all concerned. And it is Mark Sumter that leads Pete Morris to the outside. Mark McAleer up into third place. Fourth is Craig Wilkins. Fifth position, Chris Dyer. Then it's Simon Clark in the blue and white car. Up ahead of James Birch. Keep your eyes on class two. Jonathan Evans qualified a little bit further down. He got six in class for his second best lap. And that's not a best lap for Mark McAleer who's pulling up. McAleer going slowly. And his title defence opens. It's got to be a retirement, surely, for McAleer. On board with Peter Erseg. Donington, one of the, the best tracks to give you onboard footage, but that's not a sight we want to see. The reigning champion, Mark McAleer, two retirements from two races. It'll be bring on the 997, surely, now for Mark. Big, big shame. Not only for Mark, but for us in terms of wanting to watch some great racing between the big guns in Class A. Peter Erseg running well, but it's Mark Sumter up front. Craig Wilkins lights a blaze in third, giving chase to Pete Morris. But look at the battle we've got on for fourth positions between the three Caymans. It's Chris Dyer there at the moment. And James Birch up ahead of Simon Clark. Simon in the blue and white Cayman. So top half dozen, three 996.7s and then three Caymans. And a big sort out for class one behind the championship coming back this year even stronger than ever with the addition of the class three cars here's carl hazelton class three run by official porsche centers under the resto racing banner they will have factory sport suspension pirelli road tires as opposed to the slicks in the other classes classes so a great way for new drivers to come in and the porsche club looking after things as far as new drivers coming in is concerned and also drivers in class one allowing development bringing in the 997 so to use a little bit of a cliche all the bases are covered in the petro canada lubricants porsche club championship with pirelli which is super to see and a wonderful grid great liveries very well prepared cars peter erseg looking to try and get past mike johnson looks on the inside line johnson having a, a happier start in this race and behind this cayman battle which carries on and James Birch very much all over the back now of Chris Dyer. Fourth position in race one for Chris Dyer. Birch was fifth immediately behind him and putting the pressure on. Cross the line, there you go. Michael Price next from Peter Erseg. Into Redgate. I was going to say things fairly calm, but as, as calm as they can be in Porsche racing. But James Birch looking very handy. There is Ed Grimshaw hoping to get a finish in this one bringing out the uh, premature red flag to end race number one. But hopefully he'll get a decent finish in his Class 2 car in this race as Birch starts to put the pressure on and we get the box seat to watch this. He literally is all over the back of the fourth position car, putting massive pressure on. Coming now into McLean's. Now what's he going to do? Take a wide line. He's, he's also really not that far ahead of Simon Clark, but Clark not, not particularly applying pressure couple of lengths between those two Birch is looking to try and make a move where is he going to be able to do it it's not now because we've got full course caution safety car out on track so Chris Dyer will check them up he'll have the opportunity here Dyer to pose in on Craig Wilkins in third position but they go across the line and this will just close things up a little bit in these early stages. I can tell you the safety car lights are off as we look at David Botterill, sixth position in class for David in race number one. At the head of the field, though, it's Mark Sumter. So we're looking at, at potentially two different winners out right here and indeed in class one with Mark Sumter leading away. Peter Morris in set. Are we going to see a win for the 997? Has Pete done enough development? And does he feel comfortable, comfortable enough in the car to bring home a win? And we've got... Uh, and through! And on the, on the restart, great move by James Birch up into fourth position past Chris Dyer. So Birch is now the leading Cayman. They don't officially, of course, run in a separate class, but it is interesting to watch the progress of each model uh, within the championship itself. There is Del Brett, as you heard in the interview with Fern, hopefully bringing out 997 
in time, possibly, for Brands Hatch on the Grand Prix circuit the first weekend in May. It's the first weekend in June we're on the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit, 300 circuit at Snetterton at the end of June. So uh, a varied calendar on some wonderful race circuits, some of the best circuits in the UK. Craig Wilkins trying to get in touch here with Pete Morris so that he can challenge for second place. The lights, of course, won't, won't fool Pete Morris at all. There is Michael Price enjoying his race, I think more than he did off the start in race number one. So Michael well ensconced inside the top ten and just looking to make as much progress as he can. Racing here with Karim Moody with Peter Erseg immediately out front and then Andy Toon. 2016 outright champion there as well. Across the line they go. There's racing wherever you look here. Michael Price taking the outside line of Kareem Moody. This is going to be optimistic for Price. Can't quite do it. Kareem holding the inside line. And there in white is the Class 2 leader, Jonathan Evans, from six on the grid in Class 2, has come through to lead the class. Trevor Lewis running in second position in class at the moment from Angus Archer. But Evans here getting away from his classmates and getting stuck into the class one drivers and it, it wouldn't hurt him if he could pass Andy Toon to just have a little bit more of a cushion but you can see at the moment Evan seems to have the measure of everybody in class two as Kareem Moody looks to try and get back past Michael Price there is the class two race leader again it is still Mark Sumter out front setting fastest laps there is Toon again in the number four car, seventh position in race number one for him. Going down the exhibition straight, the race leader though, Mark Sumter, Peter Morris second, Craig Wilkins in third. Fourth place is James Birch now, pulling away James Birch here from Chris Dyer at the moment. So a gap between fourth and fifth position here, but Mark Sumter still up front. Jonathan Evans goes through shot, leading class two. The battle for second, though, between Trevor Lewis and Angus Archer in third. Lewis with the W on the side of the car. Chasing them is Tim Bates. Bates in fourth place. Fifth in class at the moment is Paul Seagrave in red. And I think behind them is Andrew Muggeridge on his first start. Coming down into the old hairpin. It's Lewis still holding sway over Archer. Race leaders dealing with a little bit of traffic now and going past Carl Hazelton. We'd fully expect that. Carl, of course, running in the new Class 3 car, running for the 3.2S Boxster model built and uh, run by official Porsche centres and running on the road tyres, of course, rather than the slicks. There are going to be masses of those cars as the season develops and the trailblazer is Carl Hazelton. Meanwhile, the battling class twos continue down the exhibition straight David Bosserall behind them six position in class for David in race number one and he's on for a similar position here as Angus Archer gets a bit of a lean on coming out of the chicane gets on the gas tries to draw level with Trevor Lewis for second place he's gonna have to brave it out around the outside when they get to Redgate unless he maybe gets a dive down the inside if there's a gap there isn't a gap they're holding position and it's Archer around the outside line, but nothing quite doing for him there. He could use the extra momentum here to perhaps have a pop down the inside if there's a gap on the craners or even into the old hairpin. Back with the leaders, Sumter there. Then Pete Morris followed by Craig Wilkins still in third place. Wilkins who started second, trying to keep on terms with Pete Morris. Now coming up here and moving into fourth place is Andrew Muggeridge making really good progress, started 24th on the grid and is now not that far away from a Class 2 podium. In fact, he's only one place away from a Class 2 podium at the moment. But it's Lewis from Archer, Muggeridge, then Bates, followed by Paul Seagrave. And all of those cars very, very close together indeed. As we see third, fourth and, sorry, fourth, fifth and sixth position overall. Nipping past Del Brett, Simon Clark goes past in the 23 car. I wonder what Angus Archer can do about this second position. He really would love to get past Trevor Lewis. And Lewis wants to maintain second place in class that he had in 
race number one. They're coming down the straight. Andrew Muggeridge looking pretty handy at the moment as well. But here comes Archer, who wants to get second. The way is going to be, I think, taken by Carl Hazelton in the 24 car, which is OK, but it's allowing Andrew Muggeridge into the mix as well. Now, so Muggeridge challenging for a podium position. To be fair, there was absolutely nothing Carl Hazelton could do there, aside from maybe go a tad wider, but he was on the outside line and holding that line as well. It hasn't changed the positions here, but here comes Muggeridge, looks up the inside line for third place on Angus Archer, and it's a different game now for Archer, who has to start going defensive rather than attacking for second place. Across the line, Chris Dyer. Dyer still busy chasing James Birch. Simon Clark is there as well, now looking to try and see if he can get past Chris Dyer, who's been the leading Cayman exponent in this championship over the past few seasons. Uh, really been the pioneer uh, of this car, done a lot of development and driven the car exceptionally well too. But now he's finding other drivers coming in, probably getting the benefit of his development. And a uh, wonderful piece of kit, a good race between those two. Here is Clark coming through Schwartz curve. Chug winds nicely, rounded to the right-hander at McLean's. Not quite room there, but if you get momentum, you can and possibly room going up into Coppice. They're climbing up into Coppice now. Dyer just nips across, grabs the racing line. Slightly defensive, you've got to say, into Coppice, and who can blame him? But it's not allowing him to close down on the car ahead of him, which is James Birch. Ahead of them... The race leader is Mark Sumter who's getting away and it is a battle for second place because Pete Morris is coming under pressure from Craig Wilkins and Wilkins goes to the outside line. This is a brave move from Wilkins and for sure now Pete Morris knows that he is in a battle for second place. The lead is away down the road but it's a fine battle between these two. James Birch has been passed. Birch has lost out. Now where in the mix is Chris Dyer? Dyer's gone through as well. So James Birch down to sixth place. Chris Dyer back into fourth. Simon Clark is in fifth place now. And I don't know if that's a problem for James Birch, but he was in fourth position earlier on. So Chris Dyer uh, on to perhaps equal what he did in race number one. So Dyer is the head of the Cayman family once again. Craig Wilkins having been so, so close to Pete Morris, still closing in, but there is Mark Sumter fastest lap of the race for Sumter as well and really showing the rest a clean pair of heels he did in qualifying with two pole positions and he's doing so in the race again this is the the lead car here in this group is now up into third place in class two I was just watching for Trevor Lewis who's still second in class two but Andrew Muggeridge now is on the podium incredible drive from him Morris getting away from Craig Wilkins Craig's tyres are maybe going off but there is Mark Sumter it goes on to the last lap, just under two miles around the national circuit here at Donington Park for Mark Sumter, who will, I think, wind up with the lead of the Class 1 Championship, second in race one and first in this one. And at the moment, it looks like a first and third for Craig Wilkins. It will be Jonathan Evans who will lead Class 2 with two wins in the outright championship as well. Good scrap here with Simon Clark who probably wasn't expecting that promotion goes up and challenges Chris Dyer for fourth place so a good battle between these two he's having a little look at the inside line down at the old hairpin still going is James Birch be interesting to know what the story is for James Michael Price is in seventh position ahead of Peter Ersek and Andy Toon Karim Moody completes the top ten at the minute from Jonathan Evans who leads the class twos from Trevor Lewis and Andrew Mugridge here is Karim Moody who's going to have another top ten for his opening weekend and past David Botterill goes the race leader Mark Sumter who has got a clear run now to the chequered flag so Mark Sumter wins round two of the Petro Canada Lubricants Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli now there is the checker it's Pete Morris in second place another great result for Peter Morris with Craig Wilkins completing the outright podium Chris Dyer will take fourth here up ahead of Simon Clark James Birch is in behind and then you can see Michael Price closing on those in the closing stages as well so a good drive by Michael Price into seventh place then Peter Erseg class two led by this man Jonathan Evans who's having another good run Evans will pass Del Brett who is the lone class four runner and Evans does that on the way down into the chicane very well clear as you can see 
of Trevor Lewis in second place. Here comes Jonathan Evans to win round two. A double for him in class two. Congratulations, Jonathan. Trevor Lewis just ahead still of Andrew Mugridge and Angus Archer still in the mix too. Archer's going to have a run down towards the flag and looks at the inside line side by side by side for second position in class two. Mark Sumter from Pete Morris and Craig Wilkins, then Chris Dyer and Simon Clark, James Burke six from Michael Price and Peter Erseg, Andy Toon and Kareem Moody next. Jonathan Evans wins class two from Andrew Lewis, just from Andrew Muggeridge and Angus Archer. Tim Bates and Paul Seagrave next from David Fosterall, Natalie McLoyne, Ed Grimshaw, Del Brett and Carl Hazelton completing the finishers. Mark, congratulations, what a fantastic win. Thank you, yeah, a bit easier when you, when you get the start right. So yeah, that was, it, having said easy, that didn't let me leave me until like the last three minutes I could sort of relax, but his headlights are quite bright. Uh, Craig's is the same car as mine, a 996, but Pete's is a 997 and I haven't really run close enough to know exactly where it's got its strengths, but it's bound to have, it's got more power for a start, so it's going to have strengths in certain places and we'll have strengths in others, so it was great fun. Pete, you're loving this car, aren't you? I'm loving it, yeah. <laughs> new season, new car, uh, third and a second, next one's got to be a first, hasn't it? So, <laughs> with a new car, I'm really happy where it is. The brakes are really getting mullered at the end. The tyres weren't too bad, but with the brakes, I mean, I was having to brake at least a car length before I normally brake. But Craig must have had a bit of an upset because he dropped back a bit. Thank God for that because he was coming on strong. But what a great race. Brilliant. Well, congratulations. Looking forward to Bran. Thank you. See you at Brands. Craig, that was a pretty exciting race for us to watch. You were so close there to getting second or even the win. Well, probably second was on maybe if I had uh, kept my nose clean. It was my turn to fluff the start. I missed third gear. Which, uh, which was a shame, otherwise I would have been behind Mark, I think. But uh, it's interesting racing Pete in the 997. It's a heavier car, brakes earlier. Was actually, I was having to completely rethink what I was doing around the circuit because I was bogging down in certain places. So, uh, good racing. Jonathan, congratulations. That's a brilliant first weekend of the season. Yeah, it was great. It was um, slightly unexpected. I didn't, uh, didn't think we'd come here and, um, uh, and get a couple of first places but it's uh, very satisfying that's for sure. So I guess you're now really looking forward to Brands Hatch where I hear we've got an even bigger grid. Yeah well I believe so uh, I'm not quite sure where we're going to fit but yeah <laughs> it, it should be good um, a few bits to do on the car before we get there but um, nothing too troublesome uh, hopefully and uh, yeah it'd be great. It was real mixing and dicing it was constantly changing it was really hard to keep up. Yep it was uh it was very, very entertaining at times, and I was having to use some very unorthodox lines into the corners, and uh, we, got a, we got a slipping clutch as well, which didn't help a bit, so uh, but I don't think I'd even noticed it in the race, I have to be honest. So, uh, yeah, but it's great fun, it's great fun, that's what it's all about, that's what this Boxer meeting on the Porsche Club racing is all about, good fun, nice and clean, um, no argy-bargy, and uh, yeah, brilliant, recommend it. Andrew, fantastic result. We were just talking to you on the grid and you got podium. Brilliant. Yeah, I'm really, really delighted. I was like a phoenix rising from the ashes. It was a great race, some real tussles, uh, but um, even with only having half breaks, I managed to still uh, hold a great position. So really pleased my first race. That's interesting you mentioned the brakes. A lot of people are complaining about their brakes on this circuit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's sort of three quarters of the way around. The, the pedal was going to the floor, so a quick pump. Um, that did mean some pretty erratic lines through uh, some of the corners, but it made it for great fun and uh, yeah, real close racing. Uh, brilliant, really enjoyed it. Championship table looks like this. Class one headed by Mark Sumter from Craig Wilkins. Pete Morris in third, then Chris Dyer. James Birch ahead of Simon Clark, Andy Toon. Peter Ersek, Karim Moody and Michael Price completing the top ten. Class two headed by Jonathan Evans from Trevor Lewis. Angus Archer is in third, ahead of Paul Seagrave, then Tim Bates and David Botterill. Well, that's it from a rather sunny and beautiful Donington circuit for our first round of the Petro Canada Lubricants Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli. Next time, we'll be out on the GP circuit at Brands Hatch with a huge grid. We're expecting over 40 cars. Make sure you join us then.